So uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the Web Audio API. Um, so I picked this because I was interested in uh, learning a bit about that, but I also wanted to dig into just browser APIs and just kind of dig into it and just see what's going on there, just to almost semantically just understand what it is. Um, but in the course of researching, I found something more interesting, which is that your browser is actually a synthesizer. Um, so I just kind of started digging into that. Um, so there'll be basically two movements to this talk. Um, we're going to look at uh, building an oscillator, um, but also thinking about what it is. Um, so those are kind of the two paths that I went down. Um, and then at the end, um, I'll give you an example of something that I was tinkering with. Um, basic takeaways we'll be looking at are some knowledge of um, the DOM and browser APIs, um, but also just general knowledge of sound and audio, um, and kind of just the more general idea of signal and circuits and, and how routing works, and ultimately modularity in terms of implementation and how you actually use code. It's, um, it's kind of similar how you put signals together. Um, so web audio API, let's look at web API first. So what is that? So just to clear this up, this is something that I'm still not entirely sure about. Um, but basically, uh, web API is just a general term, it's a generic term like web browser, web server. Um, it basically, it's, with web audio API, it lives in the browser. Web API, one word, is something that uh, Mozilla um, came up with. I'm not sure the status of it. Um, and I'm not exactly sure if web audio, audio API is part of it, but if you were confused about it, um, I'm still a little confused about it. But web API is, is pretty generic, and web, web, web audio API is, is one of those. Um, so it lives in the browser. Um, it contains interfaces accessible by applications running in the browser. Um, it's browser neutral, so it's the docs are maintained by uh, someone from Mozilla and someone from Google. So if you're using it in Google Chrome, say it's that implementation is, is Chrome's. Um, but Mozilla does uh, maintain a more general doc um, that you can use that I was using. So what do you do with it? Um, you play, process, stream, generate uh, audio. Um, play is going util to utilize buffers. Um, it can also utilize web workers, um, and something that I'm going to be digging into is that you ac it actually provides oscillators, um, which is really neat. So it's going to actually generate sound in the browser. Um, again, it's implemented by the browser. Uh, it's implemented by the browser developer within the browser that you're using. It's already there in the browser, um, and it leverages uh, your browser's knowledge of your computer. So it's already knowing uh, about your speakers, uh, things like that. Um, so you just kind of tap into it, and it's written with. Uh, it's working with HTML and JavaScript. Um, so let's make something. So first you build an audio context. So it's similar to building a, a canvas. So it's a constructor function on the window object. Um, this is just your basic printout. Um, you have an audio context. Um, you see the, de the destination that we're going to end up hooking into. Um, it extends, creates the ins an instance of the base audio context, which is in the API. Um, the context is uh, where the audio op op operations are occurring. So it's an audio graph. Um, and itself is uh, composed of audio nodes. So you're going to begin with uh, an audio source node, uh, basically run it through some filters, and then plug it into your speakers, and you have one. So to build an audio node, um, you're either going to be talking to an audio. You're either grabbing an audio element, an, H an HTML audio element, uh, oscillator node, or actually a buffer node, which is actually going to play stuff back. Um, and you're using these create methods to create them. Um, and so finally, we're using dot .connect to ultimately connect to the, des the audio destination. Um, but it's also uh, being used in the routing to connect all the modules. So what you have is the audio context. You have the audio source node dot connected to the gain mode, the gain node, say, um, which is going to control volume. And you're dot connecting that to the audio context. So a little bit of code. Um, you're declaring the new object. Um, you're creating the node. Let os equal audio ctx dot create oscillator. As we saw, we have these create methods in the web API. Um, then we create some effects. And then we connect them up, and we connect them to the audio destination. So again, we're creating a signal chain. So we're creating a source of, th of the signal. It's being run, routed through the dot connect, connected up to the other nodes, and it's terminating with your speaker. Um, so this is kind of putting it all together in a basic oscillator. And you can see at the bottom, there's a couple of options, type uh, frequency value, and then you call start to actually initiate uh, the oscillator. But what is an oscillator? So let's back up a little bit and look at audio. So sound, we're talking about sound. So it's a sensation perceived by the ear caused by vibration of air or some other medium. Uh, so what is audio? Well, audio is a sound. So OK, that's not very helpful at all. But I think that it's good to think about audio as a program of sound. So it's reproduced or synthesized. Um, it's not necessarily recorded, as in the case with the oscillator. You're actually generating the synthetic sound um, when you hit start. 
Um, and you're, so basically you're talking about arrays of sound intensities or sample rates. So one example, um, you know, you might have seen 44,100 uh, hertz, which is a standard uh, sample rate for converting digital audio. Um, it's the basic sampling frequency for um, when you convert analog audio to digital. So it's sampling at 44,100 times per second. Um, so basically that's, you know, that's where buffers are coming in, where you're having a lot of information and then you're kind of giving it up piece by piece, but then you're, you know, without having to have everything, you're, it's basically an intermediary buffer. Uh, we won't go very deep into buffers, but uh, they definitely are important for playback. Um, so sound is pretty interesting, just as a general thing. Um, vibration of vibration capable of causing such sensations. So what does uh, oscillator, oscillation have to do with vibration? So this is a basic sine wave, basic sound wave, uh, basic oscillation. Um, it's the repetitive variation, typically in time of some measure about a central value. Uh, and then the term vibration is precisely used to describe mechanical oscillation. So if you strum a guitar or make any kind of sound, it's actually creating the sound in the airwaves. Um, and then the two vectors, or the two ver uh, axes, uh, time, so you have pitch, so uh, depending on how long the wave is, is the uh, pitch of it, so a really short wave is going to be a really high pitch, a really long wave is going to be a lower pitch, and then you also have volume, so that's the y-axis, it's going to be louder the bigger the, vo the, uh, the wave, and quieter the lower one. So just thinking about these things, um, with what the Web API gives you, you can actually dig into it and actually start building some interesting things. Um, but that being said, uh, Vibration is not an oscillation. Uh, deep equal, sorry, that was a JavaScript joke. Uh, so vibration is not de deep equal uh, oscillation, but it is an oscillation. Um, and so just to give you uh, an example, this is uh, Bob Moog, the inventor of the, the Moog. Um, oops. So this is something that I was thinking with. Um, so basically, That's just some basic oscillation. Then we can add some other tones. So this is all just JavaScript. It's, um, it's just controlling the pitches and frequencies using some set timeouts. So we can actually take a look at the code real quick.